I have here three great panelists. Um, I will introduce you very shortly. Um, of course, the panel is very diverse. Everything we do is very diverse, and we believe in diversity also putting together our panel. So what we have here is three alumni from the EEX program. First, we have Pyka Marjanen, who is an entrepreneur. Then we have uh, Juuso Kontinen from a big forest company and Satu uh, Virkunen from a big uh, elevator company. So we have two entrepreneurs and two big company guys here. And um, we will work, ask them very quickly a couple of questions and then we have a series of arguments and we will vote about the arguments and see if we can make light about the um, pushing for sustainability innovation, leading it entrepreneurial way. And um, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. What is your personal mission? We will start with Uke. Well, I would say that it's making a new innovations profitable and, and scalable. Right. And you're 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 working now in the food industry, should I say? Yeah. So we what we want to do is to let's say make feeding animals sustainable and more profitable for animal growers. But it's also mm -hmm. circular. Mana is also about the circular economy, isn't it? Yeah. With the using insects, it and especially black soda fly larva, it becomes natural that it's sustainable as as it eats bio waste and turns that into feed. Okay, so you turn bio waste into protein, right? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, you so you you're working a very big refinery, right? Correct. A bio refinery. Correct. Uh, what's your mission in life? Well, if, if you combine, you know, the, let's say the overall, your, your approach to life, but also then, you know, what do you do for, you know, professional uh, endeavor? So, and, and where, when you were asking that how to make it as compact as possible, so I would say good life with positive impact. Wonderful. Um, are we, are we also, I heard rumors that we are supposed to Blame you if we get splinters from coke bottles in future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully there will be no no uh, let let's say and there will not be any any issues with with the with the uh, material. So, but right right you are you know we're working uh, globally with with, with Coca Cola and in order to provide then the one part of the pet bottles you know via our process and 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 it will be much more sustainable. But at the same time the the consumers will not see a difference. So we won't see the splinters or feel. Exactly. Okay, that's a promise. Yeah. Um, uh, Satu, last but not least, you you guys are responsible for Kone, all the products and sustainability thereof. What's your mission? Well, um, sort of following what you were saying, <laughs> we have been having this discussion also before. The yep. sort of be the best me, and then hopefully radiate the positivity amongst the team and the peers and whomever I work with so that we can together make a difference and make this world maybe a little bit better place to live. Absolutely. Brilliant. OK, now we will challenge these guys and uh, we will take questions from the audience. So sharpen your questions now and put them on the um, house base. We will have few arguments and we will vote. They can vote with no or yes using red or green now and then i will ask you maybe uh, a quick question about your reasoning why on earth did you choose that and not the <laughs> other one first of all you you all are on a mission my first question is that do you have a clear roadmap for your mission <laughs> Yes. Okay, this is a split vote, I would say. This is a split vote. Uh, let's start with no. Uka, why not? Uh, well, let's say every time I've assumed in, in my previous life that we have a clear roadmap, everything has started to go wrong. So we, we don't assume <laughs> that we have a clear roadmap. We, we, we target, we, we, we think we have a 
vision or goal, yep. which we are very flexible. But what we do is that uh, six months is is long enough okay. to even do do anything. Now this is interesting. You also you you yeah. I had a green one, uh, but my my uh, answer mimics quite a lot what 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 Uka said. So yes, I have a clear roadmap, but at the same time I recognize that the roadmap can be different tomorrow. Ah, is is this yeah what they call pivoting? I don't know, it's, but uh, I think that's what I've learned also in the new new business. So so that uh, the world is changing, uh, your your hypothesis you are making, you know, will be proven right or wrong as mm -hmm. as you go along. And then what you need to do is is to adjust your roadmap as as you go go. But you you can't pivot a half a billion euro uh, biorefinery quite like a startup with two laps. No, of course. Then we have a clear roadmap how we deliver on that. <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> Sato, uh, you have them both. Yes, yes and no. Yeah. It depends. So obviously, we have a clear vision mm. on where we want to go. We have right. a mission where we want to go. And we have the first steps of the roadmap. Right. We don't know necessarily how and what we're going to do 10 years from now. Exactly. Right. But we do have a clear roadmap to the certain extent. Okay. So it's evolving. Yes. It that way. yes. Wonderful. So um, we didn't really get to the bottom of that. Um, I guess the answer is that it depends. No. Now, a second question. Somebody put it to me that. Um, when you're doing something new and radical, you, you, you can't run that by consensus and uh, uh, a democratic vote, but you need a dictator who has a clear vision. Do you need a dictator to do really push new radical stuff? Ah, yes. <laughs> OK, now we start with the lady. Sato, no dictatorship. Well. I would say that no dictatorship, as as we know what di dictatorship is mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. the world, but you need strong opinions and you need strong vision, and sometimes you need strong maybe actions as well. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to lead, and there needs to be um, moments when you make the decisions, whether it's right or wrong. Decision needs to be made. So dictatorship. Mm, not quite, but you have you have to still you know get the best out of the people that works with you, because those are typically the experts. Mm -hmm. They make things happen. When you are the leader, you trust the team, the experts. But sometimes you have to, as a leader, make the hard decisions, mm -hmm. and that might become sort of. But then, of course, like dictatorship something. But then, of course, this is the age-old question: mm -hmm. is that yes, you have to focus. Where do you focus? How do you find the focus? You saw. Well, I, I had a, had a red one. Uh, also, me for dictator doesn't resonate as, as a word very 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 well. Uh, I would see more that, uh, especially in a big corporation context, you need a protector for, for mm -hmm. the team. Uh, you you need to have a let's say high caliber team. Uh, uh, who, who is able then to deliver and 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 drive the mission, but but you need to kind of enable their performance, mm -hmm. and then and, and you need to protect them from let's say those millions of different op opinions and views coming coming ah. you know out, outside of the team. So kind of a protecting them, uh, uh, making sure that they are uh, empowered to make decisions, and of course then be a coach and then try to also you know. Uh, help them in, 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 in various matters. And also, I think very much agree with, with Satu that uh, a lot of decisions and, and determination is always needed. I think that that's for fact, uh, but rather a protector than a dictator, I would say. This is interesting. This is interesting. Uh, Luca. Yeah, you need we need a dictator. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a shame that uh, dictators from the last century has kind of given a bad name to <laughs> how dictatorship should should be run. It's more like enlightened yes. dictator. So yeah, I, I know the word is is controversial, but yeah, they are uh, in a startup. It's like uh, you're more in a lifeboat boat than in a ship. Mm -hmm. And in a lifeboat, uh, it, it's every day is about survival. It's not about, OK, things went a little bit wrong or 
profit margin wasn't exactly right on it. It's, it's practically life or death. And for that purpose, you need to make very fast decisions. And if every decision is about committee and, and taking all the care of things and meeting next week, it doesn't work. So that's why I said that you need a dictator. It doesn't mean that that you make all the decisions. It just make it just gives one person the power of attorney over everyone else to veto and, and get things done so that we can survive. No, this is of course this is of course very interesting because now we can think about as a world, are we are we on a big ship uh, sipping our cocktails or are we on, on a life in a lifeboat? I mean, and how do we need to deal with this? The problem with the dictatorship, of course, historically, is that the, the, the power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. So it's not really has it hasn't worked that well. OK, um, as we're speaking about sustainability, there's lots of lots of talk about sustainability and even some action. And you guys are actually doing something about it, which is great. Um, there's a claim that all the technologies, we have already technologies, <coughs> excuse me, what we need. We have all the innovations, we just lack execution. Is it so? Do we have all the, what we need to solve the sustainability crisis? No. Okay, now you understand. Well, I'm basically. sorry, I had. <laughs> okay, fair enough, you can agree, as a matter of fact. Thank you. Uh, so we've got. You don't think we have all the solutions yet? No, I, I, I think this there will be. Um, so it, it's a question of okay, what is innovation in how how let's say radical it has to be to change things. But definitely, we're not u utilizing or have even discovered innovations, and and frankly, most of it comes from nature that has done most of the innov innovating already. We are maybe a little bit too arrogant to look for solutions from, from the nature. Mm -hmm. and, and we have started to do that. That's an interesting perspective. You so? Well, I would say that, um, of course, many innovations have been done, which, which are basically, you know, uh, waiting for the execution and, mm -hmm. and then, let's say, reaching the stage then that incremental development will, will follow. But then on a broader scale, I, I would say that we have only seen the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and as, as you know, if you're mirroring by what's what's happening in, in the whole world and how, how things are changing, uh, ultimately, of course, what drives the innovation uh, is that what is you know expected from from a market. Yep. And then as the market is is developing in such yep. fast pace, Chasing whether it's the regulation and uh, consumer behavior, you, you name it, let's say that will put additional you, force all the time more and more on the let's say sustainable innovations and then it, it will only accelerate going forward. Sato, can we somehow disagree with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> How so you don't know, do you disagree with that? Because obviously um, if you think about um Minna was talking about change, Katya was talking about change, um, it's never as slow as it was yesterday. But also then it's just faster how things are going and how technology has evolved, for example, and what that enables us for the future or for 10 years from now. Uh, definitely we're not there yet. We, we don't have all the things innovated or, or realized and so on. We got plenty of things that we, we can already today utilize from the technologies that exist that we don't fully have the potential in use. Right. So I think there's also very much um, opportunities in different industries to work together mm -hmm. and utilize the innovations that somebody else has done already yeah. yes mm. and and this is this is one of the arguments so i guess we are all agreeing with sir david attenborough who in the opening of the glasgow meeting mm -hmm. said that we need millions of sustainable innovations new stuff yep. yes and we have the opportunity to have those and you guys know how to do it as well of course so others <laughs> we can go home okay fair enough uh, wonderful. Um, we have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, Aki is asking, could you give us an example of pivoting in your companies from recent years? 
Uh, is it really possible in big enterprises? I, I wonder if we are excluded from this. But I, I will still start with. <laughs> yeah, you. I have people that two times in today already. So. Oh, okay, like, today. Well, it's like, it's just get, afternoon yeah. in Helsinki, so I mean this is good. Okay, so for us it's normal life in a startup. But what about you guys in the in big companies? Satu, when's the last time you pivoted? I, I would say maybe daily in a small matters, mm -hmm. but on a, on a larger strategic matters, not not that often, because I think the sort of vision is there, mm -hmm. and how do we get there? Then you have to do sort of you know this today that the decisions yesterday were not the ones that we should be doing, and then you people can go in the next direction. But you learn every day, I think. But this is uh, you, so I need your help here. I mean, some people talk about that in strategy, what you, you create, you create like a a range of options within mm -hmm. which you can then yeah. do stuff, even even in a big company. Is it so? Well, yeah, I think yes. Uh, of course, then then when you, you select something, you you rather stay with it at, at least for you know certain period of time. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know if the circumstances are are changing, you need to be flexible then to adjust your course. But you cannot change the strategy every second day, you know. Can't you? At least in the big corporations. Yes. So, so, you know, <laughs> yeah, I was checking is, if you're yeah, yeah. yeah. but, but I would like, like to add there that, of course, you know, when, when you are in a new business development, even in a big corporation frame, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course, you know, very often you, you come to the kind of, let's say, similar type of a crossroads that yes. as, as, as with a startup. Uh, and, and it's not then only about, let's say, it adjusting the course here, here or there, but they Hard are these kind of yeah, yes. came over moments. Yes, that you know, if we if we select the wrong route here, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a game over. Yeah, uh, many of you are possibly aware of how Jeff Bezos uh, categorizes the the big strategic questions into two categories. One, which is you know reversible, you can, you can do this, and it's like a revolving door. You can go there, and you can come back. And also to this kind of a crossroads where you really have to commit maybe to a new a road and you can't reverse it exactly. easily. Yeah. Or in, in, um, but of course, this is this is these are difficult things. Um, let's ask one of the one of these questions still. Um, there is a wonderful question for you to vote on about selling sustainability innovation. Now we're talking about sustainability. Does it require special skills, this sustainability stuff? Or is it just regular? No. It's regular stuff for you guys. Explain me. Okay. Well, if, if, if you look at our team, we are basically um, northern men that actually hunt, drive pickups, we have no idea about sustainability in the level of of like what happens in Helsinki and, and drinking organic coffee, coffee and these kind of things. I see. So it doesn't. I mean, it's for us. It it just the technology itself is something that was sustainable, but was uh, multiple times better than what was there before, and right. that that was the driving force. Not that it was sustainable. We didn't look for sustainable technology. We fell in love with nature's technology that just, just happened to be 100 times more efficient. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't, and, and we didn't know anything about insects when we started. Mm -hmm. We just started growing it because we, we thought that, okay, this is technology that is underutilized. And nature's long r &E lab came to your assistance. Yeah, it was a black box and, and we've been struggling to communicate with yep. these small guys for years. Okay. And yeah, it, it took a but while. But they, they collaborate with you? Yeah, and now mainly, almost every day. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. You also, it's not special. Uh, it's not only special for sustainability mm -hmm. uh, uh, initiatives, I, I would say it's uh, with all initiatives, you know, uh, you require, spe you know, special skills mm -hmm. to sell your ideas to the decision makers. So uh, uh, 
I would not make a distinction between, let's say, sustainability or, or other matters. Of course, then, you know, if the sustainability is, is not in, in the core of, of the strategy or, mm -hmm. or the aspiration, uh, uh, of course, then it's more difficult than submit to do versus then to sell something what is already in, in the core. But it would be the same also for something else than sustainability, which is if, if it would not be in the in the core. So um, I would say in general, selling your ideas to the decision makers requires special skills, mm -hmm. regardless of sustainability or or other flavor. Absolutely. <laughs> Satu, are we in agreement again? We are in agreement, <laughs> uh, but I, I think sort of also sustainability today um, how it's been used and how it's been perceived is something new and fancy and mm. difficult mm -hmm. and and so on but it's actually sort of common sense if, at the end of the day mm -hmm. it's just sort of looking after the nature how do we make better designs that are longer lasting that you don't have to replace your phone every two years or every two mm -hmm. months and so on oh, or something like that mm. so it's actually really common sense and Everybody who puts any effort in the thinking mm -hmm. has the skills. So in that sense, I don't see it requesting any special skills, just to maybe a mindset change or shift. With the boss or whoever or you're selling as well. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. yeah and I, I noticed that, or we, we made from the start that we are not selling sustainably, sustainable word first, that we are kind of saying that it, it's going to cost more, but it's sustainable. That wasn't our plan. It was that it has to be more efficient way of doing things anyway. Mm -hmm. So that we didn't want to put too much effort that, that that the argument is about sustainability alone. It's about other things. And sustainability is a very nice big bonus. Natural part of it. Yeah, but this is this is where it gets interesting. And it comes back to the very fundamentals of strategy i mean is sustainability something to add on or as we as we heard from minna i mean they're doing most of their profits from sustainable products mm -hmm. so i mean this is a huge change of course and i mean in, in in all of your work it's everyday stuff and this is this was one of the reasons to put together this panel is to demystify the sustainability work because these guys do it in and out every day I mean, it's being done, uh, not only spoken about. Um, now, we've been talking about collaboration today. It's also in the title of the event. And uh, you all know I'm very keen on, on, on collaboration. And I think it's a huge, there are huge hidden possibilities in plain sight, eyesight in, in collaboration. Now, some people say that external collaboration it's difficult in part because, you know, there's so much want and need for control and even envy that restricts collaboration possibilities. Is, 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 are there the control and envy restricting collaboration, external collaboration? Hold yes and no. No? Yes? Oh, okay, full, full. Uh, uh, range of colors. Thank you. Um, okay, you think there is there are limitations? Yeah, well, at least from our point, when we don't even know ourselves, what is the kind of interface to collaborate with someone else? Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find someone to collaborate and say, let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that it's um, you have to be a little bit uh, let's say, um, careful mm -hmm. in that sense. But it's not because you you kind of feel that someone's going to steal your idea or something. Actually, that's what, what we do. I, I, I started pronouncing my ideas on, on insects before. Mm -hmm. I even actually had grown any. Right. So it's, it's not about that, but it's, it's more about that, how much time you actually put effort to it and realizing that, okay, it's not going anywhere. Right. It's, it's more about the resources, but at, at least from my point of view, it's not about uh, corporate secrets or anything like that. Of right. course, you want to protect your IP before you go too much into collaboration. But if, of course, the collaboration, as is rightly said, is, I mean, the finding the right partners and 
what I'm very fond of saying is to our all our friends in the big companies is that you, you say you want to collaborate with startups, pick up the phone. Um, it's it, it finding the way to collaborate requires lots of work. You also mm. well, I, I would be a build on that and maybe a bit adjust my my let's say color, but that it can be mm -hmm. you know uh, preventive, but it it doesn't need to be if mm -hmm. if if you do your do your homework. So think you know in a kind of early phase you can go go out and let's say be uh, very open that let's let's you know discuss explore potential you know joint interest co consider collaboration and, and and so on so I think that's that's the kind of the starting starting point so not to kind of limit limit your thinking but when you really start to collaborate I, I think it's quite important then that you know both parties know what they are after. Mm -hmm. That's clearly kind of a communicated, but also at the same time, let's say the roles mm -hmm. are clear in this collaboration. So my experience is that then it works extremely nicely when, when you know, the both parties, or if there are even more than two, two parties, everybody has a clear role in the collaboration. And let's say the interests are, are not conflicting. Mm -hmm. And 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 everybody has a kind of a clear also potentially also position in, in the value chain. Typically that helps us as well mm -hmm. that you know it's a different parties from different parts of the value chain mm -hmm. that are in, in, in this kind of a collaboration uh, constellation. If there are parties that are in, in the same from the same position of the value chain, mm -hmm. uh, quite quite often it, it somehow then you know conflict of interest yes. emerges, if not in the beginning, but then at, at some point of, of the collaboration. So knowing what you are after and, and then you know transparently uh, agreeing and, and 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 building on that with, with the collaboration partner is, is then the fundamental aspect. But can you guys explain me this? If, if he pivots twice a day in by afternoon, yeah. um, and you want clarity of where he is going, how do you reconcile that? And even yeah. in a big company, yeah. your plans change, yeah. you That's get new leadership, and sometimes then things happen, mm -hmm. or you pull back from some area, or somebody finds you, you, you acquire another company which is in the area where you were planning for a collaboration so, with somebody else well i think a bit like i tried to explain is is that of course in the, in the very beginning you know you don't mm -hmm. you should not be let's say uh, uh, too precise that you know this is this is what what i'm i'm looking for uh, so so that is one thing also then of course fully recognizing that the you know the world is not static and not yep. collaboration relationship either so also kind of for, uh, understanding also, also if, if the situation changes or or a interest are evolving, mm -hmm. uh, you can also stop the collaboration or adjust it to to fit to the kind of a new uh, uh, situation. So I think understanding also that it it's not static because typically collaboration is also about innovation mm -hmm. uh, and and of course innovation you cannot you know predict or foreseen that this is going to be exactly the roadmap and our our roles in yep, the whole journey. exactly yeah exactly so satu how do you think this? well i think there is um we could have more opportunities in collaboration even across industries mm -hmm. absolutely uh, and utilize the technologies much more efficiently even here in Finland, among different companies, large companies, and and then therefore sort of create possibly even new innovations. Then that new startups could be looking at, hey, that collaboration, I have an idea, so that could be feeding that. So we are, I think we are still quite sort of uh, in independent, if you like. Mm -hmm. Like we have UPN, we have Nestle, we have Kone, we have Nokia, and and so on, but. How could we even grow our businesses? Can we do something together? And if say, David Attenborough is right, then we need millions of sustainable innovations, mm -hmm. which will practically mean that we all have to pick up the pace of innovation mm -hmm. significantly. And what I was thinking when you were explaining is that it requires strategic maturity and lots of effort to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Wonderful discussion, guys. We could go on for a, quite a while. Um, 
thanks for all the great um, questions to our audience. And I'll, for the closing words, I will turn over to Tate. Okay.